Aaron Doctor from, uh, well, he's a cardiologist from S Jimmy. M SSM Healthcare. Uh, cardiologist with Slew Care and SSM Health, St. Louis Hospital. Good morning, Dr. Michael Lim. Good morning. So this story we saw last week, and we wanted to touch on it, and you were thrilled that you wanted to sort of touch on it. And the story goes something like this, that um, there is a – how big of a problem is it in rural America in terms of access to health care? Apparently, uh, it depends on who you read and, and what you're looking at, but uh, there's not equal access to health care across the country. That's for sure. I think that, that, that's a fact. Uh, relative differences in terms of what you're looking for. Um, I think there could be some extremes. And so uh, you raise a significant problem and issue. Um, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done about it? Right? Now, you're not talking about access like I can't afford it. You're talking about access like there's just not a doctor or a hospital there. There might not be a doctor or a hospital. Uh, there might not be specialty services. Um, you know, a long time ago, because uh, I've been kind of playing around in this heart game for a while. So right. back in the late 80s, I went to a talk, and uh, they were talking about heart attack care in the country. And they showed a map of the country, and they showed a map of, and they highlighted the places where hospitals that could take care of somebody with a heart attack to the highest standards. And then they overlaid a, uh, on top of that the McDonald's across the country. Mm. Obviously, there was far more McDonald's that spread nicely across the country than there were hospitals to take care of it. The good news is, over that uh, 20, 25-year period of time, that's leveled out. And so there are a lot more hospitals that are, are spread across the country and even in the rural areas that have improved upon that. But that hasn't been equal. Um, <coughs> so that's not equal across all conditions right. uh, if you need care, uh, and, and this story was, was about actually uh, having babies, um, or that's not equal across all states and all rural spots. Um, it says that 700 rural hospitals in the U.S. are on the brink of financial collapse. This story talks about here in Missouri where uh, you have to drive hundreds of miles just to have the, the care needed for a pregnant woman. Yeah, so the... You know, the unfortunate situation is, I think, one, uh, there's a misunderstanding across, I think, most people about uh, a for-profit and non-for-profit kind of thing. Uh, and most hospitals fall under a non-profit type of a business operation. Right. And people think, oh, that means they're, they're benevolent and all that other stuff. And, and it turns out uh, there are some truths to that, but in actuality, no, that's not true. Uh, every hospital has to be able to run itself as a business. They have to be able to make more money than they spend. Uh, and when they can't do that, then they have to do what any other business would, would be cut back and to cut services or potentially go out of business. Right. You know, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm from a, home, I'm from a place, um, about 45,000 people. So it's not rural, yeah. but there's it's one hospital. Big. But it's not big. And there's one hospital, and they have, you know, um, good care, but I know a lot of people who drive from there to St. Louis for care. And so you kind of have those rural people, and then you also have the communities that are just a little larger that still go hundreds of miles away for higher specialized care. So there needs to be, uh, I would say, an appropriate balance there, mm -hmm. uh, if I can insert a little bit of, I guess, my opinion. Uh, Duplication of services across every single hospital uh, is very expensive. Uh, uh, let's just take one, for example, uh, heart surgery. If you want to have open heart surgery capabilities at a hospital, there's, there's a, a long list of things. Most of them are pretty expensive uh, to be able to pull off. Plus, you have to be able to do it enough uh, so that that team uh, in that operating room uh, is really good at what they do. So you could do it in a lot of hospitals. You could do open heart surgery in a hospital that's in the town of a 45,000 person kind of community, mm -hmm. uh, but it's gonna cost a lot of money. So if that's at the sacrifice of something else, because uh, you can't do everything. There's not an unlimited supply of money. Mm -hmm. So the balance has to be, well, where's the right places to do some things like heart surgery? And what are the things that actually do need to be more dispersed? Maybe like uh, uh, taking, care of pregnant ladies right. uh, so that uh, children that are born into Missouri and into this country have the best chance possible to uh, be able to develop and grow and, and uh, contribute to 
the state and country again. The interesting thing is when you talk about uh, bringing market forces to healthcare, bringing down the cost, and that sounds great and sure, but um, hospitals don't make a lot of money when it comes to maternity and babies. And so if they're not making a lot of money, they're going to gravitate towards the things that do make a lot of money, therefore not necessarily being available for then the mother who needs a doctor when the baby comes. I think that's a, a fair and accurate assessment. And it sort of depends, though, with respect to what do you call about making a lot of money and who is it from and who does it cover? So uh, there are some, some things that society has adopted, uh, and they're state by state. And uh, so Missouri... Have, State of Missouri Medicaid covers child care. Mm -hmm. uh, they cover children. Say, Look, we need to take care of our kids. And, and I think uh, that's a great thing. And so uh, that allows hospitals to provide child services and, and pediatric services because uh, they, they don't have to worry about what that insurance mix is and all that other things. They can get paid for it. Uh, but it's on the state to try to make sure that those things happen. Um, and that's a, a way to mitigate market forces away from maybe third-party payers that pay, I'm going to pay a lot of money for this procedure, and every right. hospital says, oh, I want to do that. Uh, so there, that's part of the balance, too. And who are the payers, and, and what do we think from a society standpoint, what are those important things that we need to do, uh, and, and at what level? And then what, where should we cut that line? Where should we draw that line so that a hospital uh, president, administrator, or ownership group doesn't uh, have a free-for-all and basically saying, no, we're just turning this into a heart hospital uh, in a town of 45,000. If you need cancer care or something else, you know, we're not mm -hmm. doing it because yeah. uh, this is what we're doing. No, no sim clearly no simple answers to all this stuff. Well, uh, that's, I think, uh, every time we talk about health care and, and trying to, uh, you know, figure out, well, how, what's the best solution? Uh, there is no one solution. It's, right. it's highly complex and uh, uh, the trouble is and you look at other societies and, and other places around the world there are very few people in, in many many societies that are in debt strictly because of their health right and in this country that's not true mm -hmm. uh, in this country we have a long list a large number of people who have had to file for bankruptcy or are in significant debt because of health related issues true. maybe not even to their own fault you know, they were in a bad car accident or something like that, or something happened to that, and all of a sudden, a couple million dollars, uh, hospital stay, and now you got to file for bankruptcy. Right, and the hospitals then write off all that debt, and so they can't afford to give free care for all these people and everything else, yeah. and so it's, the hospital has to close, and then you don't, you're not there when the next person gets sick. Everything's interconnected. So I think the you know, what I would say, I always try to make sure that we hit a bottom line. From so my standpoint, the bottom line here is. What we can't do is we can't allow our government officials or anybody else who, I guess, is a talking head on the television. Um, I guess now I'm a talking head a little bit. But <laughs> yes, you, you know, are, doctor. We, we don't, Welcome to the club. We don't want to allow these folks to oversimplify. There, there can, we cannot agree and we cannot accept the fact that there's just one problem. Right. The problem is not the Republicans. The problem is not the Democrats. The problem is not the hospitals. The problem is not the drug companies. The problem is not the insurance companies. Don't, don't settle for a simple solution of there is one bad guy here because uh, that's, what, that's what's being sold. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to jump on somebody uh, as the newest bad guy. The solution is very complex and it involves a lot of work uh, and it's going to take a long time. So uh, I said earlier that we have now have universal hurricane relief care. Un right? Unfortunately, yeah, this has been uh, about as bad as it can be. Right, but 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 we for flood insurance and for hurricane relief, we have federal dollars. But the state of Missouri is turning away federal dollars to help some of these rural hospitals through this through this downturn. Well, so that was the that was the Medicaid piece that I kind of alluded to. But in the state of Missouri, opted to not. Uh, take federal uh, grants to support an expanded Medicaid program in Missouri, which would have potentially added to this. Now, they had their reasons, right. and, but it's up to us as citizens to determine whether we agree with those reasons or not. And if we don't agree with them, then we shouldn't have voted for the people that yeah. accepted those. Or if you do agree with that, then, yeah, then you do vote for right, them. Yeah. Absolutely. Dr. Michael Lim, cardiologist with Slew Care and SSM Health St. Louis Hospital, who is also a talking head. I guess. Uh, another one of these, another of these little loud mouth talking heads. Uh, Dr. Michael M., thanks for coming in. Thank you. Take care. 820.